I don't know where the time went, but I didn't realize if my math is right, 25 years since Eve's by you, your directorial yes. debut. Yeah. yeah, 25 years. Um, and <laughs> this is probably, this is so silly, but me and a friend of mine, we used to love that movie and we used to quote it all the time. And every now and again, we just randomly say, and they were rubbing. I don't know why. <laughs> we'll be like, and they were rubbing. <laughs> I know. If you see Eve's by you, you totally get that line. Totally did. <laughs> it was not meant to be comedic, but we somehow over the years made it comedic to him and my girl. <laughs> and so whenever somebody would hook up with somebody, I was like, oh, girl, they were rubbing. <laughs> so funny. I got to tell Journey. <laughs> yes. Yes. Dude, and I don't think, I think when I had her on as a guest, I don't think I even told her that, but I was like, that line wasn't supposed to be funny. And I'm sorry. We are just too childish to have not made it. But nevertheless, um, that movie held up so well. Uh, what does that mean to you that a movie like that, that was done 25 years ago, still in present day, is still just so impactful and meaningful? It's one of the the greatest and most humbling things that's ever happened to me, you know, artistically. It is, um, I can't, it's incredibly meaningful. I almost can't describe it. Uh, when I meet people who tell me that, that this movie's played a part in their lives, you know, um, all kinds of people. It's incredibly meaningful to me. It's I feel um, I feel like it's a it's a gift, and I feel that that I'm being given the gift, and you know, so hopefully um, with this movie, I'm giving it back, you know, as well. Uh, it is very, very, very rich in my life. I'm looking at that cast, you know, you have Lynn Whitfield and uh, Journey Smollett and Sam Jackson. I mean, it is just Megan Good. It's like a, just a crazy cast. So wh what do you remember most about what it was like trying to get that film made? Wow. Uh, so many things. Um, but definitely one thing that sticks in my mind um, and a story I tell my students all the time is that, you know, I could, I was on location in Louisiana with the crew there and starting to work hard and we didn't have an Eve, that that was a very hard character for me to cast. Um, I was looking for qualities that I, I perhaps wasn't articulating correctly. Um, she had a little bit of me in it for sure. Um, a little bit of Scout from To Kill a Mockingbird. Uh, you know, she was very well defined in my head and I, I, I just wasn't finding her. And it was really at the last minute, you know, in the final hour that my casting director, Jackie Brown, had me come back to Los Angeles from location in Louisiana to see Journey Smollett. And um, what a wonderful experience. I was just texting with her uh, a few minutes ago. Just what a wonderful gift it was finding this young performer who was um, able to really someplace within herself uh, come up with this this character which was which was the character in my mind and gets uh, so much better and more fulfilled as always happens when actors come on a project and and start saying the words and you're like it's just beyond your wildest dreams and the other thing was that um Megan had been on the project so long that when we first started our read through she was Eve you know, and, and she was Eve and, she, and it took, took so long to get the movie made that she grew into Cicely. And just what a gift that was to have this, this girl that was interested in doing this very complex movie um, from the time that she was 10 to the time she was 15, you know, and, and had grown into, into the character of Cicely. And what a, just, what a tremendous gift that whole cast was. Uh, it, it was ter a terrifying um, it was a terrifying road to getting it made, though. I was gonna ask. So, did it did it take five years to make? Yeah, it took it. It took quite a while. I'm thinking. I wrote the script in '92, and and we made it in in '96. Wow! But so yeah, how that's not that long for movies. <laughs> movies no, it's not. Forever. You know, I, I I tell people all the time. One thing I've learned now living in Los Angeles, like it's hurry up and wait might as well be the unofficial motto of what it takes to make uh, or get things made. I mean, I have a whole new respect for that, like living in this town. So 
Um, so yeah, no, you're right. By Hollywood standards, it's like, oh yeah, that's like a, a drop in the bucket. Now, did it you is. know when you wrote the script, did you already have an idea of who you wanted to play each of these characters? No, I wrote the script as kind of an experiment in expression, really. Um, I thought it might be a novel. Uh, I kept, it was a series of short stories that I had written. Then I thought I might turn them into a novel. And then it started to come out in script form, which was not surprising. Um, but I wrote it thinking one day when I'm older and wiser, uh, I will possibly direct this, but it wasn't immediately on my mind. It was like, oh, I'll put it in a drawer and I will save it until I'm smarter, <laughs> and, you know, um, and, or maybe I don't fit into my little black audition dress, you know, um, and, and I'll do it later. That's really was my first thought. And then we started looking for a director for the project. And that process was very interesting. Um, I'm extremely fortunate that everybody said no, because we went out to some pretty exciting people. And, uh, and it really was, I took some meetings that, where I realized it, it, it became crystal clear to me that what I had written was um, delicate and that it could easily be misconstrued and that, it, that what was very important to me was a fine line and um, cross boundaries and, and things that were actually quite subtle and that if I didn't direct it myself, it wouldn't be used by it. Well, when I'm just thinking, because I think that the movie was made in 97. So in 96, yeah. it came out in 96. 96. Okay. So that was a very interesting time for black movies at that time. There was nothing like that being made. Um, at times, how discouraging was the process for you in trying to get this done at a time where, you know, again, this really wasn't the type of black films that were being made on the big screen? Yeah, I mean, the interesting thing was it was so discouraging that it, that it almost wasn't discouraging. It was like, it was so discouraging that it was like, well, it will be a miracle if this happens. You know what I'm saying? So I was very determined. And what really helped bolster my determination was how much people responded to the script. So I took I took hundreds of meetings because people that probably had no intention of doing the movie, just wanted to meet me because the script they found compelling. And, um, and once I realized the power of the script, I started to believe this is a movie that's, that's you know, going to get made. And like I said, took lots of meetings as a writer before I even was certain that I was the director for it. So I was discouraged, but uh, I would say I became even more discouraged later after I made that, the movie uh, by, by other projects I've tried to put together. Uh, Eve's Bayou was so um, unlikely. <laughs> it was kind of preposterous, right? So it was, it was so unlikely that, uh, that every, every moment of it was a gift. And for those out there who are listening, uh, the year that Eve's Bayou, uh, Eve's Bayou came out, it was the highest grossing independent film of the year, um, which is quite remarkable, uh, you know, for any film, but definitely for an independent film. Um, when you think about all the things you may have learned from that initial uh, directing experience, what are some of the things that you learned from Eve's Bayou that still stay with you? It has to do with the the nature of kind of the movie industry and the art of making movies, because there was still something that was so personal. It was not um, strictly autobiographical uh, in any way, but it was very, very personal. The, the language was personal. The characters were personal, were, were ba you know, based on people that I knew and uh, that I'm related to, you know, and um, I didn't realize the extent to which it belongs to more than just me. <laughs> and in the process of that deep collaboration, you know, the collaboration with other artists, I've always understood and, and I'm empowered by. It's one of my favorite, favorite, favorite things. Uh, but, but just the industry of it and um, my responsibility to the people giving me the money and um, how that relationship works and I remember my agent saying to me one day, and it stuck with me all this time, he said, it's not a painting, Casey. 
And I really um, appreciate that. I appreciate it. And I tell my students this a lot. You know, it, it, it requires a level of collaboration that is very challenging, um, where the director must stick to her guns, but also um, allow for uh, the opinions of other people who maybe, you know, the, the, this is not at all personal for them. Maybe this is a, a new world that is opening and still they have a, a, a very real stake in it and these are your partners. And so that kind of, that was an, an evolution, I would say, in, um, in my thinking, you know, from before I directed anything to directing um, where I am now. Do you think it would be easier to make Eve's Bayou today than it was then? Well, I do. Yeah, I think it would mm. be easier. Um, I, it's so funny because sometimes we say, oh, God, we can never get it made today. And sometimes it seems like it's easier. I think that right now, if there was a student coming out of film still school when you know with a with a script um that evolved, I think that that would be a pretty powerful thing. Have you over the years um ever considered or seriously considered giving it a second treatment? Uh, I asked because um one of the the shows lately that I've been watching is Fatal Attraction that is now on uh Paramount plus and I was like, mm, this, I really enjoyed how they reimagined this. Have you ever given any thought to doing some different kind of treatment of, of Ease Bayou? I have, absolutely have. Um, at the same time, there was perfection about it. Um, and I don't mean, oh, that's a perfect work of art. I just mean when you think about the impact, like the lasting impact of it. And um, it's a miracle anytime you get a group of people that are that exceptional all together working on the same project, you know, just the, 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 the quality of the artists and, and the, the dedication with which they came to the film um, and, the, and, and the way the audience came to the film. There's something so special about it that I'm very hesitant to mess with. You know what I'm saying? 